I'm Eric. And I'm Jamie. And this is Horoscope, a podcast for people who love horror movies. And people who want to love them. Okay, here's the thing. We have, we are on a journey this weekend um, because we watched Horny Robert Pattinson yesterday. And now. And now. <laughs> oh, 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 you thought he was horny then? <laughs> oh, you I thought mean, he was horny. You thought he was just like, ooh, I'm playing chess with Bella so hard right now. He probably, Oh, I you mean, thought the chess pieces he was, were too phallic? You he, no, that? he was hard because he's like stone. Because he's a vampire. We watched Breaking Down Part 1. <laughs> Some say under force. Some say in a clockwork orange style. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't even deny it. <laughs> it was open to a Democratic vote. And Twilight won. We're watching The Lighthouse. We're watching The Lighthouse today. <laughs> With Robert Pattinson and William Defoe. Mm-hmm. I need to get the wiki. Oh, the wiki. You know what they call Lighthouse people? Wikis. D- no, they don't. They do? No, they don't. Do they? Uh, yo, no, they you don't. Know, <laughs> <laughs> Why would I make that up? <laughs> what a weird bit Wait, to do die they? on. They're called wikis. Not like it's not. It's W I C K E Y. Oh. I'm assuming this is this is my own interpretation. Okay. I could be so wrong. They light the candles because they light the candles. The wiki. They're, they're, they're the wiki people. Wow, I really thought you were fucking with me. Oh. So I was like, Eric's making fun of me. <laughs> you're, 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 a type of, you're another type of wiki. <laughs> I guess, huh? We're the wikis. So in preparation, we did spend three months in this single room <laughs> oh, to get no. their mindset. <laughs> Tell me all about the lighthouse. All right, so. This movie was directed by Robert Eagers, who did The Witch back in, like, 2014. Yes. And The Witch was, like, the movie that I feel like kicked off everything. Like, like this new okay. wave of horror movies. Like, it was like, the first one I remember people being like, oh, horror could be, like, good again. But, like, in the in an artsy way, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the A24 stamp. Like, yeah, there yeah, for yeah. you. Because The Conjuring, like you said The Conjuring kicked it off of, like, fuck, this is scary again. But not, The Conjuring's not, like, artsy. <laughs> <laughs> no shame to the conjuring. It's like a, it's like if you want a good burger, you get the conjuring. But if uh-huh. you want like a gourmet, the witch is like one tiny piece of baby with like some sauce on the side, right? Mm, you stop baby? it! You're making me so hungry right now. <laughs> I just want to eat that baby. Oh no! Yeah, I'm, um, worried. I'm worried about that. That's all I know about that movie. And the end. Oh, then you're then good. I mean, there's some stuff in the middle. Yeah, I don't know about the middle. So, the be- so okay, as we've established, the beginning, the middle, and the end all have stuff that might, be, might not like. Yeah, that sounds about right. That tracks. And you'll they all have it. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then after that, everything became the new witch. It's like everything now has like the um, hereditary yeah. trailer where it's the like the strings. It's like, dee, 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 dee. Yeah. And it's like before, hereditary was like a new witch. And then before that, everything was the new witch. What was before that? What was the witch? Just itself? It was just the witch. Hell yeah. It was just some indie movie that has spooky stuff in it. I love those strings. Am I basic? It's I love good. those strings. <laughs> it's just like, I like when I first saw the trailer, like, ooh, I like this. And then yeah. it's just like every trailer has yeah. it. It's like when they like use like a pop song in it and they would slow it down. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're just like are running out of songs. Oh, you mean do. this season eight finale of Vanderpump Rules? Yes, of course. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, Toto's uh, Africa just slowed down. <laughs> no, and, that like, song's sung called by Raise Irish. Him Up. Oh, <laughs> it's called Raise Him Up. Go look it up. It's not a good song. Jamie's so proud of herself right now. We're gonna, I yeah, we're gonna pick up this rain. So it's raining. Yeah, the storm is hitting us. We're gonna be trapped in this room, like <laughs> oh. we said, <laughs> for months. Yeah. You'll get that reference after we watch this movie. Yeah. Did you? What did you hear? So you knew stuff about the witch. I'm assuming. Um. Yeah, I knew it was scary and good and weird. Is what I knew about it. That was it. That was like all I really knew. And then I read the I read the wiki, which I'm pulling up now, so I don't oh. forget. All right. Because everything so you like said to describe all. the witch, I, you could also use to describe the lighthouse. Yeah. Uh, okay. It is also weird. Would you say that it's a 2019 psychological thriller film directed and produced by Robert Eagers, who co-wrote the screenplay with his brother Max? See, this isn't even a horror movie, technically. Well, according mm-hmm. to Robert Eagers, he also didn't call it a straight horror movie. He called yeah. it a like a weird tale, like Lovecraftian movie. Okay, and that's the genre. Weird Tale yeah. is like the genre. I, yeah, you can establish that it's like a genre. Cool. What um, else would it, what, are there any other modern movies that would fit? Like what the lighthouse is? Mm-hmm. Um, Should I finish reading this Wikipedia? Is there more good stuff in there? 
No, it just says William Defoe and Robert Pattinson Woo. are two lighthouse keepers who start to lose their sanity when a storm strands them on a remote island where they are stationed. Uh, it was an international co-production of the United States and Canada, and the film was shot in black and white with a nearly square 1.9 colon 1 aspect ratio. And I'm sure there's more stuff you're going to tell me right now. There is. Yeah. Also, but wait, what? Okay, so what else is a weird tale? Tech, would, um, weird tale? I would almost... Like a color out of space? That's yeah. So Lovecraft, yeah. I I believe this is where this is where we get the fans after us. I'm pretty sure Lovecraft. If there are wrote... any fans of anything left, who are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I'm pretty sure Weird Tale was like a jar, like a I'm pre- like what he was referring to was like the magazine Weird Tales, which was they had oh. kind of a formula to it, okay. which you could say is a genre. It's like okay. saying with like Tales of the Crypt is a genre. Okay. Because that type of story, mm-hmm. they like have like the formula to it and then they just plug and play. Goosebumps. Goosebumps, yeah. Is that its own thing? I guess you could, we haven't reached that point yet, but you mm. could say like, oh, this property is very goosebumpsy. Well, I never got to read Goosebumps. Oh. I only got to, what, what about me would indicate that I was allowed to read Goosebumps? I don't know. Do you want to, can you I tell you the most oh. insulting thing anyone's ever said to me? Oh, perfect. Yes. It was was it my, from me? No, it was not okay, from me. Okay, perfect. Go ahead. <laughs> Eric, some shit Eric said. <laughs> no, it was, um. This guy I hated so bad at my first internship. I hated him. He was like one of my office coworkers and he knew I hated him and he wanted me to like him super bad. And I just hated him. And he told me, um, apropos of nothing, he's like, I feel like I know something that you would like. And I was like, what? And he's like, I bet you really like Nightmare Before Christmas. No! <laughs> and I was... <laughs> first, you must attack the heart. That's a William Dafoe quote for you. And then I was like, on sight, like, <laughs> whip, whip, like the Kill Bill sirens. I was so mad. Uh, I hated that dude. Anyway, he got fired like a week later. So. For saying that comment. What up? For saying that shit. Yeah. Bringing that into this life. Everyone knows Jimmy <laughs> hates claymation, which they did announce I a do new hate claymation. Guillermo but... del Toro no. Pinocchio no. stop motion no. movie. No, no. <laughs> and I saw that. I was like, no. oh, we should watch that. I'm like, Jimmy's no. going to hate everything about Dead of horrors. I'll watch it, but I'll hate it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I'll you will watch, watch? What? Is Robert Eager's next movie after The Lighthouse. Oh my god. The yes. Norse Man? Yeah. Yes. Tell me about... Well, no, <laughs> don't, don't. I'll just but... say this. It's got Bill Skarsgård, and it's got a character called the Slav Witch, played by a peeler. I'm so fucking excited. I'm thrilled and delighted and can't wait. So I feel like everything about me indicates that I wasn't allowed to read Goosebumps, but that I do love Bjork. I feel like my whole <laughs> energy is like... Those are the two things you need to know That's about. The two me. genders. Those are the Bjork two genders. Bjork and Goosebumps. <laughs> um, I remember seeing Goosebumps at like Scholastic Book Fairs, being like, yeah. Ooh, but then I wasn't allowed to read it. I, I read it. remember specifically wanting to read those books. I had an older sister, so there's always older literature. And I tried yeah. to read them, but they were kind of hard. And then I convinced my mom to read me one. Oh no! And I, got, I can imagine that going super well. Got too scared, and she had to stop it. Oh. And at the time, she also seemed to be getting freaked out by the book. But I don't. What was the book? Do you remember? It was like a haunted house book, and like they had yeah. like a, the. Um, oh, it's coming down. You know the, the is it gurney where you like deliver the food inside a house? Yeah, like a conveyor tr- thing. Yeah. Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like they opened it up, and there was like hands inside. Ooh, and hands. I was like, I can't read it anymore. My mom's like, Yeah, it's too scary. But was she telling me the truth at the time? Jamie. You should ask her. I'm now realizing. Hold on. So weird tales. Yeah, there's like it's kind of like a story of like weird uh, like things. Tales. Yes, like spooky undersea yeah. things and aliens, and that's like where Lovecraft got his start. He like wrote for weird tales. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, it's Lovecraft's birthday today. Oh happy, birthday, birthday, happy birthday, you racist piece of shit. Yeah, fuck, fuck you. How, you thought we were wishing you a birthday? Hey. Oh, I'm kicking you down, this you old ghost nerd. Is like, oh. I'm sure he is. <laughs> I'm going to write a. I'm going to write a book about people being foreign to me and spooky. No, fuck off, you shitter. Thanks for the aliens. God, there's a documentary on YouTube that you might want to watch about his life. Because even in the documentary, they're like, yeah, he was like a virgin. Living in his house. <laughs> <They're> like fucking, <laughs> fucking. What's the opposite? No, it is virgin. I was like, what's the opposite of a Chad? It's, it's, it's a, a virgin. It's an incel. It's, he was. An what's incel. his first name? H. Howard. 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 Why you hate all the people, Howard? <laughs> okay, what about, what about him? <laughs> it, that's where it, 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 he fits into the weird tale category, and okay. that's where he takes this inspiration from. Got it. Um, it's very much like the human psyche. It's like human psyche mi- mixed with like mythos. I love that. Um, yeah, and maybe you'll love this movie. Yeah. Why does he suck so bad? 
I don't know. I just love, I I don't know. I've played, have you, you haven't played Call of Cthulhu. No, but it's I have a, like directly read Lovecraft. Yeah, and you've like so done much the real Lovecraft thing. Stuff. I've just played a tabletop RPG. Yeah. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. It was like really gross, but I still enjoyed the, there's like sanity is like your HP. Yeah. And you like roll for that stuff. Um, yeah, it was fun. I will say like, I feel like a lot of adapted stuff from Lovecraft has been kind of like, exaggerated in some sense where mm-hmm. it is like a thousand dead babies are, are formed into a huge creature in, in his movies did his... I tell you that example from the Call of Cthulhu game I played that, that yes, had yeah. to have been that I was like that was too specific meanwhile in his books he's like they were <laughs> eldritch and undescribable yeah well how do you describe something that's unknowable <laughs> I'm no. gonna talk about the lighthouse <laughs> if god willing okay it's a weird tale <laughs> yeah so uh Max uh, Robert's brother yes. wrote the original script and it was based off of Poe Tale. Yeah, okay. Poe was called The Lighthouse. But it wasn't getting off the ground uh, and Robert Eagers went off to make The Witch, made that project and then he had a few other bigger projects that he was trying to work on including Nosferatu. Uh, Eric's wearing a Nosferatu shirt. <laughs> yeah, <I'm like, laughs> uh, Which I'm so angry that that, that doesn't exist. Because of COVID? No, it seems like it just like the project fell through. Oh, then he made the okay. lighthouse right after that. Got it. So I'm glad I have the lighthouse in my life, but I really Maybe wish... Maybe it'll come back. Maybe someday. Nosferatu's not after going anywhere. After the Norseman. He can make Bjork Nosferatu. What if... Oh, yes. <laughs> William Defoe has already played Nosferatu, so... I would like Robert Pattinson and Bjork and William Defoe to be the only characters in the movie. What if we recast Twilight with those three people? Wow! <laughs> Did the lights Ooh, dim wow. for a second when I, the, I, when I like, said wow. that? There's a storm going on. When I said that, the lights like flickered a little bit. <laughs> like I, I willed something so powerful into the universe. <laughs> Bjork is everyone. Robert Pattinson is Jacob. William Defoe is Bella. Bella. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <I love> <laughs> We're not going to talk about the lighthouse. <laughs> okay. 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 His little brother, Max. Robert Eagers. Yes. He's like, he's, he's a very smart lad yeah. he's a smart lad who knows movies really well yes he knows costuming really well he knows okay. history really well okay so a lot of the research i did just went over my head nice okay where i was just like yeah sure i love that that's great the i we listened to the a24 podcast episode mm-hmm. with where he and ari aster taught and then like the episode robert eagers is just like yeah i really love like this costuming it's like from this time period and you have this inspiration blah 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 and then your master's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a person to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was like, we had a researcher, and he's just like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's just, he knows a lot of stuff. So, I'm going to read stuff off and sound smart, but it's just, it's him. I love that. His main quote. I'm for cutting the, that out so they won't even know. Oh. He, he, his main quote for this movie that he repeated was, nothing good can happen when two men are trapped alone in a giant phallus. Thunder just sounded outside when you said that. <laughs> a giant phallus. <laughs> the name of the episode that's gotta be it <laughs> we're really pushing it jamie we put so many cuss words in our fucking things and i was what? just like, people want what they want okay yeah. they want a giant, they want a giant <laughs> who wants that actually never mind <laughs> so i mean someone there's someone someone us i guess we're watching it do you want to know a, you can cut this you want to you want to know like a very cursed fact about william defoe Yes, I'm not cutting whatever it is. So there's the movie Antichrist. Yes. Very okay. fucked. We're never watching it. Okay. Boom Defoe did get nude for this movie. Okay. They did have to use a prosthetic for him, though. Because his dick is so... What? Big? Small. His dick's so small? Big. You just... <laughs> Don't make me guess! <laughs> Eric's just waving his hands around! His dick was so abnormally big... That they, they thought it would be realistic enough, so they used a prosthetic dick. <laughs> That's such a power play. You're just like, I'll get nude for the movie, and they're like, Ha! Ah! You package Schmeet. You gotta put it away. <laughs> William Defoe has his own William Defoe. Stop! That sucks! <laughs> no, I'm leaving this in. <laughs> no! Do we see his dick in the lighthouse? No. Okay. It's too powerful. Missed they, opportunity. They were gonna show Robert Pattinson's dick, but then they cut that. Missed opportunity Which means again. there's footage out there of Robert Pattinson's dick. Am I saying I want to see that? I'm just saying you should put that in the director's <laughs> cut or something. Oh my god. So, the movie. <laughs> We're 
we're never going to talk about. He, so this is like, the curse, isn't it? Right? They're going crazy. We're going. We're, we're just going never going to make it. It's raining. It started. It like I said, it's raining, and I looked outside, and it like lightninged at that exact mm-hmm. point. And the rain kind of stopped for a second. You called it out. <gasps> it was because we talked about William Defoe Schmidt. <laughs> 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 Same thing happens to me when I talk about food. <laughs> okay. So wow. he has people use specific Who he? Who he? Which he? Who he? We're never going to watch this movie. Maybe <laughs> we only have. <laughs> Okay. So the cast. Robert Eagers. Speaking no, what? Cast. Robert Eagers has people what? Oh, he, he so like every all like the dialects are very specific in this movie. Okay. So William Defoe has a um a Atlantic fisherman accent while Robert Pattinson gives us his best main accent. Okay. For for the time period. It's like based off literature and stuff that he did um research on. Um So we're and, watching this with subtitles is what I'm hearing. Definitely. I remember <laughs> yeah. watching it in theaters being like, I don't know what they're saying half the time nice. but I'm loving it <laughs> you're like this energy loving it uh, both actors had reached out prior to this movie saying they wanted to work with him after seeing The Witch that's amazing so that's oh my cool. god wish wish granted right he's like that's yeah I want to work with you because like Robert Pattinson wow. wants to do weird movies yeah. I do appreciate William Defoe for like doing a movie like this in his career I feel like he's getting to the, the dirty grandpa part of his life no, where you no. can just like kind of like peace out and do like cheap movies yeah, and be like just I'm phone here. it in yeah, yeah. William Defoney. Um <laughs> God. I just cheated out I just cheated out for you and I didn't even know <laughs> apparently the two actors didn't really get to know each other on set because okay. they had very different acting styles but very like similar so like William Defoe, when he was on set he was very friendly talked with everyone but then after William their... Defrent Yes, he was really into friend on set. But then afterwards, he would go and live in like the fisherman village nearby. Will you fish? <laughs> I'm just imagining a fish with like his smile now. Just, Make it hey. happen. You can Photoshop. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> you know me too. Eric well. is our meme maker, and he's a blessing. Yeah. Can we photo? I'm gonna edit that in with uh, that Willy Wonka quote, where he's like, "We are the dream makers and the dreamers of dreams, or yeah. something." I'm gonna yeah. be the meme makers, the memers of memes. <laughs> The content never stops, baby. Never stops flowing. <laughs> never stops. It's what I do for a career. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so Robert Pattinson, <laughs> on the other hand, stayed at the hotel, but on set was, like, in character and did, like, a bunch of weird shit on set. Okay. Um, also, William Defoe, classically trained, loves to rehearse. Meanwhile, Robert Pattinson, very, very modern, very much, like, in the moment, very method. Okay. Uh, so doesn't wants to be doesn't want to rehearse. But he wasn't in a fisherman village. That's that not William method Defoe. to me. I know. Oh. Mm. What, which of those styles do you like more? I like the I like William Defoe style of being like, all right, I'm gonna live in this village. I'm gonna get my like stuff there. But get when I'm on set, seawater. Because like I understand that on set, like there's so much stuff going on. Yeah. The least you have to deal with at that time is some actor like being in the moment and like. Yeah, I'd be like, okay, please move. Craft services is right here. Like, please fucking move. How long? <laughs> how long did this movie take to film? It took 34 days. Really. 34 days to leave Erickson Park, like the Spongebob reference, in Cape Fortune, Nova Scotia, Canada. And it was a miserable shoot. Yeah. Pretty much it was shot on like this black and white 35 millimeter film with a orthochromatic aesthetic to invoke the 19th century photography. Nice. Uh, it doesn't pick up on reds. Okay. Cool. So it makes the blacks a lot blacker and it makes the film a lot darker. Yeah. So they ha- are on this island that's like rainy and like stormy and they built the set and they get these actors on here and they're using Did they build the lighthouse? Pretty sure they built the set. Oh shit. And they had to blast it with light because it doesn't pick up on dark. So yeah. So like crew members were wearing sunglasses. Oh my god. And actors could barely see each other (laughs) at some point. Oh my god, no. But it's completely worth it. Like it's so because like you see I think we group like black and white movies as black and white movies. Uh-huh. But then when you watch this movie, it's like there's just like there's still so much style and like depth and like uniqueness to how it's shot. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Um, it looks so good. Uh, it was a difficult shoot, freezing temperatures, Robert Pattinson being crazy. He would beat himself in the face. Oh my god. He would drink the rainwater in between takes. <laughs> he would just spin in circles to help himself get into character. <laughs> Which I'd love to see the behind the scenes. I'm just imagining him punching himself in the face, like, ah! <laughs> just like spinning around. And William Defoe's just like, all right. Do you want to run lines? <laughs> <or>? <laughs> Never. 
<laughs> and then and then he would stick his finger down his throat to make himself gag. Ew. And at one point, like William Defoe and like Robert Pattinson are like snuggling up. And then Robert Eagers <laughs> I mean, had the quote, and he said that uh, Robert Pattinson was sticking his finger down his throat while there's like William Defoe's face is right there. Yeah. And William Defoe looked at Robert Eagers saying, "If Rob fucking pukes on me." <laughs> They should have left that in. <laughs> <laughs> just, but, okay, another thing, too, yeah. to know. Barbara Patterson, William Defoe, great with crazy faces. Yeah. The, you get a yeah. lot of face in this movie, a lot of it crazy. William Deface. William Defoe. <laughs> Robert Pat Faceton. No. <laughs> No. Face, no, mine was face Bert. <laughs> no, mine was Robert face Bert. Face Bert. <laughs> face, face Bert Eagers and Face Bert Patson <laughs> and William Deface. <laughs> Oh my god, oh. what else, Eric? Anything? Oh my god. I wanna god. watch this fucking movie. Alright, let's do it. Okay. Anything is there anything else? I'm sure there is. I'm sure we forgot something. It's a it's a you know, do your own research, people. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very aggressive. Um Okay. See you later, we mateys. Is that good? Wow. Hey y'all, content warnings for the lighthouse coming at you. Um, This film contains animal death, unreality, gaslighting, and sexual content. We also briefly mention rape in our discussion, but there is no rape in the movie. Um, The animal death is like in the first third of the movie. So if you're watching along with us, when Robert Pattinson finds a seagull that's dead in their water, and then he looks at another seagull with one eyeball, just stop watching. Eric fast forwarded for me. This movie isn't particularly scary, but it is very weird. Very weird. And it is very horny. So if you're listening, you are sitting in the splash zone. Um, It is our job and your job to make the world a little less horrific however we can. So this week, we're being good wikis and we donated to Wikipedia. Thanks for the horror movie facts, Wikipedia. Throw a few bucks their way. Um, We all owe them quite a bit, especially if you're like me and you used it to read horror movie plots all the time. Let's get into it. What? Yeah. So we just watched The Lighthouse. What? <laughs> what in the goddamn <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Jamie, I'm, I'm, I'm coveting what I'm about to have to ask you. Uh, could you could you please summarize the plot oh, of this movie? Uh, can you? Can I tag out? <laughs> Do you, you can't. You no, can't okay. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> Robert... Both Roberts have broken me. It's okay. It's William Defoe, Robert Pattinson, are lighthouse wikis, and Robert Pattinson's the newbie, and he's kind of getting up his ass and being a jerk about it. And then Robert Pattinson's like, "I don't want to drink alcohol." He's like, "We're drinking," and then weird shit starts happening, and he won't let him up into the lighthouse to look at the light, and then. He tells him it's bad luck to kill a seabird, and Robert Pattinson, after several antagonizing seagull moments, um, bludgeons a seagull, which I did not watch, which Eric fast-forwarded through, and after that, the wind changes, and then they start going crazy, and then they bond, and then they don't bond, and then they're yelling at each other, and then just a bunch of crazy shit happens, and then Robert Pattinson thinks he sees a siren, and apparently the last wiki went crazy and started seeing sirens, and... He found a mermaid token in his bed in a one one of two vaginas in the film. Many, many penises, but one of two vagina images. Have, There's like you, a slit in the bed. You have asked for more dicks in movies. I guess I got it. There was Woo! no no dick, but... But wasn't there. And then... <laughs> <laughs> so he's like a mermaid token, and they're both like awkwardly trying to jerk it in different parts, and it was incredibly wet, and it was raining the whole time, and just like miserable. And then... They miss the tender coming to be like, oh, the lighthouse looks good. So then they're stuck there. But then he's like, we've been here for for a long time. You've gone crazy. I've gone crazy. What's your name? And then you find out Robert Pattinson's name. He said his name was Ephraim. His name is actually Tommy Thomas. His name is also Thomas. They're both named Thomas. And then Robert Pattinson let some other dude die in a logging incident so he could take his identity and have a clean start, which is the infamous, why did you spill your beans? And spills his beans. And then... Fuck all happens. They start. They all just Mick lose it. Like he just Mick loses it. He like tries to kill William Defoe at one point, but then William Defoe catches him. And William Defoe is either like startlingly clear or like crazy. It's like one or the other. And then 
uh, they have like a fight and then he ends up besting William Defoe and William Defoe said that he's actually he calls him a dog the whole time and says that he's a dog so then he makes William Defoe be the dog and ties a like rope around his neck and makes him crawl with him outside and throws him into a grave he has dug and throws dirt on him and then William Defoe gives this crazy speech and then Robert Pattinson is like I'm going to the fucking lighthouse so he gets the key after he thinks William Defoe is dead and he's gonna go up into the lighthouse and then William Defoe pops back up and he's like it's my lighthouse and he stabs him and then with like a pickaxe but then Robert Pattinson big murders him and then goes up into the lighthouse and sees the light and has an orgasm starts screaming starts crying starts laughing falls down the stairs hard cut to robert pattinson lying on rocks with his innards being eaten by seagulls end of film beautiful he did it i had to really hone in there i had to really just like narrow down i was like there's so much but that was the film yes so two dudes go crazy or not or do they they the, do. The true story on Small's Lighthouse Tragedy was that there's two <laughs> men named Thomas, and one died, and then the other tried to keep their body, and then went crazy. Oh. Okay. I can't wait. So, I was, like, really enjoying watching this movie and just being like, wow, I'm delighted. This is so weird. I have no clue what's going on. Woo! Good thing nothing terrible is going to happen. <laughs> Until the last ten minutes. Um, Eric and I were talking about how I either really like structure or no structure in a movie, and this it falls perfectly into the lack of rules. Mm -hmm. which I was delighted by, again, until the last ten minutes. Um, Can can you please tell me about this movie? (laughs) So we already went to the Wait, hang on. What do you think about, what do you, Eric, what was your reaction to this movie seeing it? First time. Oh, I love this movie. (laughs) Yeah, I I think I love it too. I love this movie so much. It's, 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 I love The Witch, and I think it's great that we're doing these, these second movies. Yeah. Because... You have Hereditary and then Get Out. And then I saw the, the second movies. And both were like, I like the first one movies more. Like, I like Hereditary more. I like Get Out more. And but I was this like, one. But this one, I was, this is what I wanted, like, Midsummer and Us to be. Like, that next level. Like, from the yeah. second, that opening shot, I was like, all right, I'm done. Like, this is it. Like, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, the film, we'll, we'll get into it, but it's beautiful. The aspect ratio works. It's just, like, shot so, it's not yeah. just black and white. Like, the darks are so black. Yeah. And the lighting. Because you said red isn't red isn't filmed right yeah okay. it doesn't pick up on red um and it's just like you can it's like the light's just trying to force itself into the movie like it's yeah. like so unwelcome that they you, you can tell that they just had to blast it because this movie's so like and like everyone's just like so dark and it just all the shot compositions are so yeah. well crafted yeah um and the acting no but like what yeah crazy. okay so craftsmanship but like like gut plot reaction to this movie like gut reaction to this movie you loved it oh i loved it, it was you're great. just like i was I delighted think- I think I'm still delighted, but it really caught me off guard there. It's like, it's gross. It's wet. God, it's gross. It's weird. It's, it's confusing. It's so squelchy. We watch it with subtitles and it's like squelch, squelchily <laughs> squelching. Like squelch, squelch. And it's Ugh. just like, but it's just like a good time in my opinion. Like I had a good time with it. Like it's fun because it's funny yeah, too. I mean, I did too. I was, I was delighted. It's funny and weird. And that's like, like the thing where a lot of like these other movies, I feel like. Yeah. Because you could watch, somebody else could handle this movie and it would be just miserable. So do you think plot wise, what the fuck do you, th- do you want me to say what I think happened? Go for it. I think, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know! <laughs> I was like, are you ready for this? Like, I'm about to lay it down. I was going to like carve some meaning out of this. <laughs> I don't know if he was, okay, just a stab at it. I don't know if this is right or wrong. I think he, I think William Defoe killed the other dude. Drove, drove the other dude crazy, mm-hmm. and then he killed himself or killed him. And then he was just fucking with Robert Pattinson the whole time. Mm. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? Not what the film means, you, but just like what, what actually happened. What do you think right after you watch it? And then I want to know what the actual answer is, if that is revealed. There, Probably not. There is there is no real answer, yeah! Jamie. <laughs> it's what you wanted. What do you think? Uh, I thought it was cool because it felt like how two people deal with with that kind of conditioning and like William Defoe starts crazy two men <laughs> two men thank you two men which we'll get into yeah but what, what my first initial reaction and thought about this movie is that you have Robert Pattinson in the mo- beginning of the movie who's trying to like keep it in and be like oh you're not supposed to drink on your job and blah 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 mm-hmm. and William Defoe's already kind of like loose and crazy mm-hmm. but then by the end of the movie all that kind of like that tension and trying to keep everything inside like breaks Robert Pattinson and then he goes crazy 
And William Defoe, still crazy, but it's like always been crazy, is like now the voice of reason at the end of the it's movie. Like first time, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's just like then it makes you like question of like how to handle crisis. I guess it's like the either you like you go perfect crazy. Perfect pandemic you, movie. We have to say it. It's obvious right up front, but perfect pandemic movie. Yeah, it makes me worry for Eric and his roommate. <laughs> <laughs> I do have an axe. <laughs> oh my god. And a leash. <laughs> That was just for Jamie's reaction. <laughs> oh, yeah, this film is incredibly horny. It's like it's like a secretion. That is how I would describe the texture of this film. Yeah. Same as Alien. Just like As as Jamie did. <laughs> there's a scene. There's a scene where Robert Pattinson's looking up at the light and William Defoe's up there, obviously like jerking it. And then Jamie's like, oh no, he's in the splash zone. <laughs> immediately splashed out immediately immediate. splash there's by. sludge there's splooge there's spit there's snot got it all what else do you want a mermaid vagina i guess that's and more yeah that wasn't that bad what what did you think i wasn't gonna like the jerking it it was very mild besides no okay so you actually you literally tapped into my question for you like towards the beginning of the movie because jamie is so smart of like i don't is think this, so i have no clue what happened in this movie is this movie accessible for women no, uh, uh, I don't think, well, that's not fair. My answer's still no, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Because I, what I was thinking is Lord of the Flies this whole time, mm-hmm. and how, um, William, what's his name, William? Shit, whoever wrote Lord of the Flies. He, <laughs> Eric's covertly typing for me. Um, he was a teacher at a boys' school, and he wrote that, and everyone's oh, like... Oh, you mean William Golding? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I went to I went to freshman English class. Um, yeah, he he worked at a boys' school, and he's like, "This is the reaction. This would be the reaction to this situation." And I don't no. doubt that for a second, but it's not like humanity's reaction. It's like boys' reaction because hmm? there's like a there's like a extended rape metaphor in Lord of the Flies too. Oh, you don't remember that? I never read it. Oh shit! They um they kill a pig by like stabbing it through the butt like Ugh. they like rape a pig basically with a blade Ugh. yeah it's gnarly yeah it's but it's like not if if there was like a gender difference there like it wouldn't have been the same at all so mm. i feel like this movie wasn't and i asked you if you felt like it was accessible as a dude and you were like yes yeah. yes yeah. you do think it is yeah okay i think i think it's very male centric but i i yeah. like not Cause... not in a way that's like women aren't welcome, but it's like not, not in a way that I think the filmmaker was like women just won't understand this movie. You know, it no, wasn't like it's... douchey, but it's like not about. It's about like two men's relationship with themselves. It's like the, it's like a mirror turned towards a man, and like okay, that yeah, because it's like it deals that's with like toxic masculinity. Yeah, it deals with like sexuality. Oh my god, I was like, please make out. They were so close. And th- this is don't be a generalization, of course, but like. It just feels so much like just like boys, like men. Like it's just gross, and it's just like has that 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 weird horniness to it, and like two dudes just this like is Eric saying this, not me. That's for the true, <laughs> but but like no, but like it's like what you you we've talked about it before, like how like you like get a, a bunch of lads together and they just like it's the lad energy they gone get all, wrong, yeah, and they <laughs> just sour, they become poisonous. so horny with each other and like so like yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. homoerotic, but awesome. then, like, also afraid of that, so then you get really violent, and you just start beating on each other. Yeah. It just looks like, it's just like a mirror looking at, like, all the gross weirdness that, like, goes through, like, a mind of, like, a dude. That's interesting, too, because he tackles himself at one point, and then, like, Robert Pattinson tackles who he thinks is William Defoe, but then it's mm-hmm. himself, and then he looks up, and then it's, William Defoe is naked standing there with the light, he is the lighthouse, like, shining yeah. light on this yeah. situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think... It's not inaccessible to women, but it's not for... It has nothing to do with women. <laughs> it's it's a male experience that they're yeah, sharing. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think that's a bad thing. I think The Witch is more of like a female-centric experience. Yeah. Is Robert Eagers gay? No. He's straight. He's got a wife. I see. Well, we shouldn't assume. That's true. He could be. Bicon. Yeah. Biconic. <laughs> I don't know his sexuality. There you go. But I know Big he has a wife. <laughs> I see. And they seem like a nice couple. <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, tell me tell me we wanna tell me all your thoughts. I'm still digesting. I okay. actually I really do like this movie. I like it a lot. That's yeah. A, yeah. I mean it's it's just like welcome to the welcome to the welcome man to zone. My mind. <laughs> the man zone. 
<laughs> I'll go through some facts and then I really want to just get into thoughts and things because yeah, yeah, this yeah. movie is so this movie was made for four million dollars made 18 million dollars not a lot of money not a lot of, but like Hardly. that it's like A24 gets it they're like hey here's this amount of money to make this movie and we're gonna make a profit off of yep. it because this movie this movie would like how do you how do you market to a wide audience this movie what's your pitch they did it in the trailer wow, I had no clue what this movie was I was just like madness and isolation and it's a Whatever. black and white movie in a squarish format. Like nobody I wants to go see it. that. It was, Some people do. Film students. You might have. You might have missed it. There is a part. I think that this is the part where I realized I love the movie. Like loved the everything about it was because there's a part in the very beginning when Robert Pattinson is walking up the stairs to go into the room, and he hits his head on the door frame. But it's like where he hits his head is where the frame is at. Oh, that's rad. <laughs> so it's like it's like he like he like like makes you aware of the like frame. Bumps back into the frame. I didn't notice that. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, sh- like it's like he's reacting to the s- confined space. Yeah, I thought it was going to break the fourth wall a few times. Mm. I mean, it kind of did. It the, it the film is small, because like, I feel like... I thought it was going to be like, why'd you spill your beans, Jamie? <laughs> I was like, yeah! <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think if it bro- broke the fourth wall, I'd discredit it. It's, it's played very genuinely. It has humor yeah. in it, but the humor is like within the film. It's not like... Yeah, I don't think I do, was... I, I mean, some parts of it are genuinely funny, but I think I was just reacting to how absurd it was. Yeah. And just kind of like delighting in how fucking weird. And just like, wow, what? Yeah. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> I, think he, I think Robert... I don't want to speak on his behalf, but I think he would enjoy that. Okay. I think he wants You're people to be the Robert. of his movies. I so. was, yeah. Uh, just for comparison, too, just because we've gone through so many of these movies so far, and, and I'm starting to, like, wonder, do comparisons. So Midsummer was made for $9 million, but made $47 million. Yeah, that's So tries. above and beyond what Lighthouse has made. Conjuring was $20 million, and it made $320 million. <laughs> Us was made for $20 million, and made twenty five or $255 million. Oh, my God. I was like, only twenty five. <laughs> And then Truth or Dare was made for three point five million dollars and made ninety five million dollars. <laughs> so b- I wish more every money. Every person who watched Truth or Dare had to do a double feature with this. <laughs> with the Lighthouse. Yes. You get to go see Truth or Dare for free, yeah. but you have to watch the Lighthouse after. I would say the other way would be great, but that's just because I love the no, Lighthouse. No, I don't think so. They'd be like, I don't wow, think that... that was a good scary movie, and then they have to watch the Lighthouse and be like, "Excuse me." <laughs> yeah. Um, where the movie there that that specific shot. What, where he is holding um, Rob Passon with a light in his eyes is a direct like recreation of a painting from 1904 called Hypnosis by Sasha Schneider. Do you have it? Yeah, Can I let me see pull it? it up real quick. It looks familiar, but I don't know if it's just because I my mind was like, this is a symbol. There's Maybe. a few like even at the end, the, Robert Eagers has given some background on where he's gotten inspiration from, but has never like divulged what the movie's about. How much of this is his brother's script and how much of this is... His brother's script, I think, was, like, mostly... The, the fact that there is, like, light keepers. Oh, I see. Okay, but then Robert's like, I'm gonna fix this for you. Don't worry. Yeah. And then did this! This is the drawing. Oh, that wasn't what I was thinking of. That's mm. sick as fuck, though. Mm. Because even at the end where, like, Robert Pattinson is, like, laying on the ground with, like, the seagulls is very, like, painting-esque mm-hmm. of how he's, like, posed and, like, This is This movie is bird propaganda. <laughs> He just tried Be to kill birds. nice to birds. <laughs> if you hurt, hurt a bird, you'll... Uh, you'll get eaten by a bird. Robert Eagers was using inspiration from psychoanalysis of Carl Jung, J-U-N-G, yeah. and a little bit of Freud, with the phallic imagery, the father figure. What and, do you think about Freud? Like, guy, guy liked his... Like, guy wanted to fuck his mom. I hate that dude. Anyway. <laughs> fuck, wanted to fuck his mom. He's, He's like, like, didn't everyone want to fuck your mom? Did you want to fuck your mom? You're like, no! He's like... Mm. He's like, I'm writing down that you did. <laughs> okay, next, moving on. Um, alcoholism has been described as... Yeah, a, no shit, huh? A, a theme of this they movie. Drink, they drink lighter fluid with honey in it later when they run out of alcohol, so... Mm-hmm. What do they call it? Monkey juice? Monkey juice! Yeah, they yeah. say something. <laughs> yeah. There's so many quotable lines in this movie, too. Oh my god, Eric. Yeah, <laughs> we can't even get into it. <laughs> she yeah. said she's going to use the heart, the heart <laughs> speech it on me. It was so funny. He's like, you love my cooking. You have to say it. And he's like, no. And Robert Pattinson. And then he gives him this crazy speech about how he's going to get eaten by seagulls. Yeah. And then he's like, hark, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I'm going to do that every time Eric does a bit. Just tries to do a practical prank. <laughs> every time Eric tries to prank me, I'm going to do the hark a seagull bit. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to do it. This would be very powerful. I love it. This whole thing, the first half, like it felt very much like a play. You could do this easily as a play. As a play? Yeah. Oh my God. <gasps> felt like a two-man show. Mm-hmm. Like, very much so. Like, I could imagine 
I said myself in sophomore acting class, like trying to stumble my way around one of these. Well, not me. You could, oh, you could cast girls as Lighthouse. (laughs) Doesn't hit the same. I think it would feel oppressive. Do you think this movie would play out the same if it was two women instead of two men? (laughs) What? No. What, what do you think would happen? It would be completely different. It's, it can't even think about it. I've okay. been trying to think about it the whole time. You yeah, can't you even know. think about it. It would be mm-hmm. completely different. It would be completely different. Yeah, we'd have to just watch it and find out. All My right. guess is they would fall in love and then be lesbians in a lighthouse. Huh. And that's the cottage core dream. All right. Jamie did try to pitch her version of the female lighthouse <laughs> in the middle of the movie. And she's like, instead of a giant lighthouse, it's just to be a... Big canyon. <laughs> oh, oh, now no, you have I said a word canyon, for it. yeah. Did you? I just thought you went straight through big vagina. I did say big vagina, but then I said big canyon. I was okay. trying to think of it, but there's no, like, big ditch. They're, they're Grand Canyon keepers. <laughs> what didn't you like about it? Anything? It's kind of like what, you know, it's kind of like what you're talking about, how it's like, you don't know what's going on and you're delighted by it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what, what would, how could you change that? That's kind of where I am also landing. Mm. Not enough erect robert pattinson that's what i would thank Gross. you put it, make an nc-17 cut put that back in there wow um yeah i think they both were really fucking good they were both crazy good i think it ended like because it's like how do you end a movie like that fucking how they had like the sound blown out and like the film got oh, distorted i thought that was how it was gonna end yeah okay so he's like he finally gets to look into the lighthouse his like eyes roll back in his head. He looks like he's gonna come, yeah. and then the image gets like blown out, and the sound gets blown out, and it, that was the only part that like really unsettled me. Yeah, um, the jump scare got me when William Defoe jumped out of the grave. <laughs> I should have known. I was like, this motherfucker. Yeah, like, he still pop up. He still pop up. He's like, he did pop up. He's like, ah, I'm <laughs> <right."> <laughs> yeah, literally. Uh, I, I did. Well, I, I went was just to the about bathroom. To William Defoe naked, standing on the lighthouse, <laughs> just like because Robert Pattinson looks up towards the beginning, and it's like William Defoe naked, just like yeah just like right out front and then he like looks up and he's gone which is my favorite uh parts of these viewing experiences is when jamie's talking but then something pops on the screen that completely stops her in her tracks I, <laughs> oh eric's saying... favorite part is me stopping talking <laughs> thanks eric <laughs> not very good for a podcast eric <laughs> <laughs> oh we're in the lighthouse now baby <laughs> hark <laughs> um don't spill your beans <laughs> Uh, no, what didn't you like about the movie? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was its own thing. <laughs> and you gotta give it oh, credit this, for that. Oh, this, the lighthouse, was its own thing. Uh, there's nothing I could change about it because I couldn't do any, there's nothing I could do. Right. So nothing. Great. I don't think. You, you did it, Rob. You bamboozled us both, huh? You really did. William Defoe knitting was very cute. Could have seen more of that. Learned how to knit for this movie. Very cute. I like to think that he knitted both their sweaters. Jamie disagrees takes too long i knit <laughs> i knit and i know very, you don't know how long they've been there that's true so do you think they were what do you think do you think they just there's no clue there's no way to know no they just lost it like i mean there's like the debate if they're like the same person or not i do think there are two distinct people but how so long too. they're there because then he starts talking like them too because you pointed out that they very have two very distinct accents yeah but then robert pattinson starts talking like him at the end oh, i didn't really notice that really the no. difference is your Oh, all right. Yeah, that was the big difference. That, that was how I was tracking them on the subtitle. Because I didn't even pick up on the fact that like he was being t- called a dog, and then all of a sudden... Oh, really? You just no. thought he ma- totally Smart. lost it? Yeah. No. He, um, yeah, he started talking like him and calling him a dog the way... And, he, it's, and calling him lad. Mm-hmm. So Robert Pattinson was speaking to William Defoe the way he was speaking to him, and he was like very submissive to him. And then he started saying, you're... So he was... He like turned into him. They like flipped roles at the end. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't know. Ah! <laughs> uh, I do think they were two different people as well. Yeah. Time wise, it gets so blurry because once you start drinking <laughs> the, the lighter, lighter fluid, fluid. <laughs> things get a little bit wonky, you know? Oh my god. And then the house like falls apart too. It's very, yeah, I love that. Like water rushes into the house and it's like raining and there's like shit everywhere and it's just like crazy. It just consistently impresses me how like shit, it's like, wow, shit's crazy. And it's like, and it just keeps on getting crazier. It's like, oh, you thought this one. (laughs) And now he's a, now he's a sea monster. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So he's on top. Robert Pattinson is on top of him punching him. And then he turns into him. He turns into the mermaid. He turns into, oh, there's a mermaid. We talked about the mermaid. There's a mermaid. Yeah. He he like sees a mermaid and then he like, he grabs her (laughs) boob. And then he runs away because she starts screaming at him. And then he gets drowned before. This is the first mermaid. Mm-hmm. And then he has a dream about a mermaid before that. 
And then after that, he has sex with this mermaid who has an inexplicable mermaid vagina. And then the, the well, am I missing something? And then he turns in, and then William Defoe turns into the mermaid later. Yeah. And the mermaid's like, the hands, instead of like trying to have hands get off him, it's like caressing him. And then William Defoe turns into a fucking Triton ass tentacle monster with a sea, like a sea star on his head. And then it turns into the um, guy that Robert Pattinson murdered mm. and took his identity, which I was confused by. And Eric picks up. Can you tell me, tell me more about that guy? So I feel like that entire thing I just said was completely ununderstandable, and I apologize to so, the audience. Okay, so to break it, <laughs> break it down, to so jump back, so at Robert Pattinson's character, he calls himself was it Ephraim? Ephraim, but it turns out he just adopted that name because he was in a he was a logger. Yeah, and he witnessed or murdered the original Ephraim and stole his identity from a logging accident. And then fled. I thought at that point he was, like, confessing that. I thought he had killed William Defoe. Oh. And I thought he was, like, talking to no one, being like, sorry, I killed him. Like, I thought oh, that's what happened. And right. then he's like, psych! Yeah. <laughs> and then he was still there. I was like, oh, what? Because that's when he disappears. He goes, hey, <laughs> Best part of the film. Uh, true. <laughs> echoing through the halls. William Defoe. Oh, God. I, again, I'm can't phrase both these. I'm a defan. <laughs> I'm Defan. Defan of Defoe? <laughs> what can I say? That's our shirt. Defan Defoe. <laughs> wow. I am, yeah, they were they were both, like, fucking amazing. But yeah, so he, he and then it turns out that his name is Thomas. Yeah, and so, so they're both named Tom. At one, at, at towards, when he starts becoming, when, when Robert Pattinson starts becoming, like, the dominant uh, person in the relationship, yeah. pretty much, is when he punches William Defoe back, and then he turns straight into Ephraim. And then, then that's when he starts choking him, and then that's when he turns into the mermaid, and then he turns into the sea monster, and then he turns into William Defoe. How could I have remembered that? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for breaking it it's down. It's in my brain. Yeah, it was. I was just like, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole time. Yeah, and that's yeah. when he starts talking like him and and kicks his ass and makes him bark like a dog and then mm. throws him in an open grave. Yep. In that order. And terrible. God, fuck. That's just so a poor. To William Defoe, he's he's in wet mud, getting dirt thrown on his face that he has to audibly like chew to say his lines. Amazing. Getting, I'm sure some of that dirt got into his eyes. Oh yeah. And was just like giving it. Amazing. And that was probably one of how many takes. One. <laughs> this film was shot in a single take. <laughs> that was take that bird man. I would believe it if this film was shot in a single take. That I mean that was one take when he gave his whole speech and doesn't fucking blink. Nuts. Crazy. Absolutely well, don't, crazy. Don't ever diss somebody's cooking. Be respectful of it. So funny. And then he gives this crazy speech, and then right after Rob Pats is like, fine, I like cooking. Like, that's <laughs> so funny. Like, pit William Defoe, <laughs> this William Defoe versus Gordon Ramsay fight. <laughs> I'm Team William. Um, I, I, I don't think I I don't think I disliked anything. I can't criticize. Like, there's nothing to criticize. I thought you were either hate this movie or love it. So, I love it. I'm so glad. Loader listed, baby. We're loving it. <laughs> Yeah. Do you want to talk about uh, the homoeroticism or toxic masculinity first? Eric and I have talked about a lot of the time how boys roughhouse and it gets really gay really quick. But then it's like fake. But not really. So, okay. Toxic masculinity. Because that's it. Because like there's a scene where they're about to kiss. <laughs> I thought they were going to have sex. I was like, Eric, did they have sex? Like, I I thought. Maybe. There was times. Yeah. And that's it. Like, okay. So that does tie into the homoeroticism of it, which goes that's a little bit deeper it's, than that. But like yeah. the toxic masculinity of like like, being afraid of being comfortable with a man. Because every yeah. time they got, like, comfortable with him, they immediately hit back. Like, literally, they're about to kiss, then they start to, like, get into a fist fight. Yep. And, like, every time they start getting closer, they start to, like, fight back. That's what I think. So, even with all the shitty things about being a woman, you could never pay me to be a man. There'd be no fucking way. <laughs> because I, I feel like, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like, like, tenderness is, like, very hard to... For men to access and it's not your it's not the fault of men but like the way that men are raised that's the thing that kills me about people who are like men's rights activists i'm like men need you like men need you, you and each other and compassion and love and tenderness and you mm. don't like get it like you have to like man up be a you know yeah like boys will be boys like pull your shit together you can't you know be a sissy or whatever and it's like that's why so many people when they if you're straight like you have one woman in your life who you have to like dump all of your shit onto because you've never been able to process it or have anyone like be there for you in a way that's like important. 
I don't know if that's true or not, but this is my observ- for obviously not for everyone, but that's my cultural observation. <laughs> and I think like I, I like again not true for everyone, but that's like the surface level of or like not the, but that, that's like the baseline of like part of like toxic masculinity and like yeah, stuff absolutely. that people deal with, and like both these characters are a product of that. Yeah. Um, like even like when like the whole spill your beans thing, it's like Robert Pattinson finally finds somebody that he barely can trust and opens up to them. Yeah, and they immediately betray him, and they're like, "Why did you do that? Why did you?" Spill well, your he's beans? like, he's like, I can trust you, and he's like, "Nah, I don't trust you." Like yeah. right after, because it's yeah. just complete hesitation. You don't know who to trust. Mm-hmm. And Robert Pattinson's so like reserved because I mean he's probably like indoctrinated and taught, taught all his life to like keep everything inside. And well, then, that's what I was thinking too, because like you, you're asking what this movie would look like with two women. Women weren't allowed to do this work. Right. So, like, even with this time, it was, like, it's, like, inaccessible to even think about it. It would have to be a whole different structure for this to even happen. Mm-hmm. You know? Or and if it was set in a modern day, then it wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't be the same fucking movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I think... Tell me, what else are you thinking about it? Uh, so, there's an article saying that it's called, But Just How Gay is the Lighthouse? <laughs> by uh, Michaela Barton of Flipscreen. Which, Flipscreen, I, I just found out this through this article but it's like a whole platform that talks about movies but through diverse journalism cool so props to them for that and i'll link it in the bio um but (laughs) there's two quotes in here that i really enjoy one is uh this film is so clearly gay that an analysis of its homophobic subtext would be like arguing the sky is blue uh and she pretty much goes into the fact about how it's like instead of it, I mean like there's the side of like the toxic masculinity being comfortable with like your sexuality and being comfortable with men but she's like no it's like he just he is looking to who is he or sorry Robert Pattinson is looking to like like as I was watching the movie more and more I, I began to think that the light is like like being openly gay and like because the seagulls are the are the souls of dead sailors sailors so it's almost like the, the 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 spirit embodiment of like the the hetero male culture. Robert Pattinson comes into this island. He has she points out that like the whatever he, he's keep constantly on the move and he's never comfortable where he's at. The she kind of goes into more of the analysis of like um in this article. In this article she talks about how when he thinks about the other guy, it's always from like behind and that's interesting. Hey, if you're listening <laughs> to this, are you gay? Can you tell us? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, who's gay and listening? DM us. <laughs> but yeah, so then it's just him trying to like deal with his sexuality, and I think him confessing is kind of confessing like his sexuality to Defoe, and Defoe has like a Do you th- adverse reaction to it. Is this a theory you like, or is this what you think is actually happening? It's I I, I it has merits. I think so too. Uh, she has another quote too, which this is where another thing that I was like that. that you were talking about how he runs away when she starts screeching. But in this article, it says, um, when that scene comes up, it is fairly obvious the mermaid is never Tommy's siren. The true siren is revealed later, a little later in the movie, which his true siren is Defoe. And because it, it's it's very, it, it plays with the sub and the dom kind of tendency in it, which is weird. Yeah. Because um, he makes him a dog in the end. You have to... Well, he's, like, reverting him back to the thing he's most afraid of being. Mm. So he's, like, making him the thing that everyone told him he was. Mm. And he's, like, I'm in control of that. So yeah. I guess that's that. But I thought it looked like he was he was making him bark, and it looked like his hand was going for his dick. And I, I was, like, ah! And yeah. Eric's, like, there's no rape in this movie. And I was, like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I realized in that moment that it did look like that's where it was going. And then he, like, wa- stands over him as well. So I was, like, ah! But, it, yeah, I was, like, not... So it's something yeah. because I I had not thought about how like it being direct homoeroticism until I read this article. Yeah, I think they're more sold on that idea than I am. The article is. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, it's called <laughs> just how gay yeah. it is. I mean, I think it's it's there. It's like not. You can't watch this movie and say that it's not. Yeah. Like playing with that idea. But I think it deals more with the toxic masculinity side. Yeah. So you think that the light represents him, like, accepting himself? Hmm. In no, in the context, I don't know. Because I thought the light was, like, him... I guess it's the same, like, confronting something unknowable, which I know is, like, a theme of, of Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. Just, like, looking upon the face of something that you can't fathom, and then it making you crazy. Yeah. I think, so 
so, all right, this is what I've been, I've been trying to figure out how to articulate this while we've been talking and I haven't been able to, but I think mentioning that she's not his siren, that William Defoe is his siren. Women, there are no women in this film, but womanhood as a concept feels like a set piece in this film, Hmm. but not in a way that is like, women are like, like entirely objectified in this film. Like, there's a mermaid, which is him hallucinating, or maybe not, a mermaid um, totem, like a statue, like mm-hmm. a little statue thing, that he pulls out of a slit in the bed that looks like a vagina, but it's very phallic as a symbol. So the thing that he is, like, seeking out that is, like, the representation of women is actually phallic, so that's a good point. Oh, there's, okay, there's another scene, too, where, like, when he's jerking off in the, the shed. Yeah. When he, you said he had his bad fap or whatever. Oh, yeah, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're cutting that. Whoop. <laughs> not um, my protest fap. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. He's, like, trying to think of the mermaid, but then yeah, his he mind... Yeah, he just, like, cries and starts jerking off, like, jerking off and crying and, like, losing But then his it. mind goes to the guy and, the, the, it's, like, it's like, intru- like, the thoughts keep on intruding in of yeah. this other guy. It well, could... it's like horrific thing, good thing, sexy thing, man, woman. Yeah, but it's like, like he's trying to suppress that memory while jerking off. And yeah. Like trying to be like, no, I really want to fuck this mermaid. Yeah, and but then, then he like dude. breaks the thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like women like women are purely objects in the film in that like the mermaid is not a real person, obviously. I mean, and like the... Like mermaids as a symbol are like just men... Pretending they're not gay on the ocean. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, I'd, fu- I'd fuck a half fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tits, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so hot. <laughs> yeah. Not you, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> unless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. And I don't mean that, like, women are, like, objects in the film as a criticism of the film. I think it's very intentional. But that's why it's not, like, open. And there's no. Because I I get the sense when you were watching it, you could imagine yourself in their shoes, right? Like, not really, but, like, the broing around and the lad energy and the fighting each other. From, like, like an observer's point of view. Exactly, but I couldn't at all. We did have, like, jokes that we were both Robert Pattinson. Yeah, we're like, who's Robert Pattinson and who's William Defoe? But at the end, we were just like, we're... (laughs) No, but that's, that's just the sake of being two people in a room together during a quarantine talking about things. Yeah. So, but, like... I couldn't imagine myself in this movie at all. Mm. I could just watch it. I couldn't put myself in any place mm. in the movie, which isn't bad. And that's not a criticism. That's a, that's just a comment. It's just a thought. It's not like a, I'm not saying this movie's like neg- anti-women or anything, but it's like, right. it's not for women. It's not about women. It's about, it's about exactly what you were talking about. I don't even think I articulated that right. Do you know what I mean though? Like women are not like present part- in the film. Yeah, no, there's only one woman and some mermaid that he's trying to... But not even that, just, like, the... like The the, the concept of, like, the feminine... It's like women meaning. as a symbol are in the film. Yeah. 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 It, it, like, literally, the, the screen is filled with such, like, testosterone and masculinity mm-hmm. that it does not have room... Because, like, even when they're, like, like no space. jerking off and, like, being sexual, it's not... There's, like... There's the totem, which is, like, a foreign... Like, it's... It's not, like, a... It's not even, like, a... Like a does he have that good of boobs? <laughs> yeah, but it's just like it's just like with like it's, even then it doesn't feel like it's like towards another gender. It just feels like this like it's contained within this like the stench of this movie. This movie does have a stench. Yeah, it's just it's just gross and it's just like it's just oh, like this man. luby bubble. God, of, what a movie! Wow, it's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, I guess you know what? This is just a side note. Uh, it is great that there's a movie out there like this where it's like it's like you could be say that's not accessible to women. It's great, but maybe Hollywood, you know, make more movies that aren't acceptable, like accessible to men. Make make the woman's lighthouse, whatever that is. It might not. It's not this. The canyon. It's called the canyon. <laughs> I'm writing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's just gonna be. It's gonna be harp. It's gonna be loud harp noises from Joanna Newsom blasting in the background the entire uh. time. That sounds amazing. <laughs> sounds like my dream. Um, I don't think it's a... If you had told me you're going to watch a movie full of a bunch of dicks and you're going to love it, and there's no, there's nothing for women in this movie, right. I would be like, that sucks. It did not suck. Yeah. So give me an open-minded award, someone. <laughs> yeah, I... It was a... It's a... It's a... It's a, a sloppy romp. <laughs> sloppy romp. 
A sloppy, sloppy romp. Yeah, it's up for like that's. I mean, this is this is the type of movie I like too, where it is so like what you said. There is no like rules. No, right. it is so up that for doesn't bother you. So this is like okay. This is the difference between like Midsummer and this. Midsummer, it felt like it was too grounded. It was yeah. it was trying to it was trying to play out these certain events have to happen in order for this to happen, and then it gets kind of a little sloppy. This movie, it's like things are happening, right? And you're like, yeah. And it's like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. And the movie's like, hmm, yeah, you don't know, do you? It's Lynchian in that way. Here's the thing: I don't really like David Lynch. Mm-hmm at all unpopular opinion i'm like flinching as i say that the david flinch the because david. people are gonna be like coming for me but i i think he does it in a way that it's like really makes you think doesn't it that's kind of how i felt watching twin peaks mm-hmm. it's like isn't this weird and like i i watched it when i was pretty young i watched it as a teenager i guess it's not that young but i was like i just did not fuck with it at all i did not jive with it this felt very different than that mm. But just by, like, yeah. the, the whole, like, surrealistic, like... No, I understand. I, I wonder, I'm what I'm saying is I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. I think the one interesting thing about this movie is that it just shows you things. And then yeah. still messes with you. Because there's a scene when uh, Robert Pattinson is trying to leave on a boat and William Defoe starts chasing him with an axe. And then yeah. Robert Pattinson runs away, goes into the house, William Defoe smashes the axe into the table, they enter a new room, they start talking, and then William Defoe's like, you just came in here and almost killed me with an axe. Yeah. And it's just played out, there's no cuts, there's no weirdness to it, it is just played straight, and then you're just like, wait, what the fuck? And there's a scene early yeah. on, too, where he's just the like... The film's like gaslighting you as yeah. well. Well, that's what the... Do you know where the term gaslight comes from? Is it from smelling gas? And no, crazy? it's from a movie where the husband kept either lighting or unlighting lamps and telling the wife that she had done it already. Oh. That's where the term even comes from. Okay. It's about a man driving his wife crazy on purpose. Huh. And that's what the movie's doing the whole time. But with lighter fluid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a bigger with a bigger lamp. I'm gonna it's time to rate it and I'm gonna shock you, I think. This is the this has been the hardest movie to talk about. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> it was the hardest one to summarize. It's just like the hardest one to like in- interpret, I guess. Like I'm having a hard time even like exp- like I had. Oh, hard- I'm thinking of like emotionally afterwards. Oh no 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 no! I'm talking just about like, like literally, literally like literally like even like I have an article that lays out all their facts. I'm still just like I guess it's gay. Like I guess it's homoerotic. <laughs> <laughs> I I mean I think it was. I I think it's very clear that it's unclear. You yes. looked for a second. You were like I saw you at the corner of my eye. You're like. Eh? <laughs> it's very clear like, it's so clear now eric i get it it's clear that it's like you are just buck buckle in buckaroo like we're gonna do some respect respect your respect birds. birds respect your cooking you can make out instead of punch what what would have happened in this movie if they kissed I, probably nothing would have been different oh shit okay i don't think so mm-hmm. i thought they were gonna have sex for real i was like absolutely they are going to and then they're gonna hard cut to something else and we're not gonna talk about it mm, that, That's what that I would fit the movie yeah Eagers, hit us up. Let us know. <laughs> Was that in a script? <laughs> um, I'm going to give it on spooks. I'm going to give it a... I don't know. Fuck, a two? Okay. It wasn't scary. It's not a spooky movie. It's not. There was some jarring, but it was jarring. I was like, it's too late. Because I remembered the ending. I was like, oh man, this is great. This is great. Oh, he's, he has his guts out there. I'm like, wait, is that going to be bad for Jamie? And I asked him, like, oh. <laughs> I was like, you didn't warn me about this. And he's like, is this bad? And I'm like, oh, is it good, Eric? <laughs> Oh, this is it good? <laughs> okay, for clarity in the future, should I warn you before something like that happens? Um, maybe just it's happening. Something's happening. <laughs> okay. I I didn't. It was okay. I was worried for a second. I was like, oh god, but yeah, I didn't love it. Mm. But it was too late. Yeah. So maybe a small warning before if something wild's gonna happen, just say something wild's about to happen. That would be me saying a bunch of stuff throughout. Yeah, the but night. like that kind of wild, <laughs> yeah, like guts outside gross. of a person. Yeah. I don't love that. I don't. I don't love it if someone's alive. Mm. Like in Midsummer too. Mm-hmm. Like that was awful. So, but I'm fine. I'm okay. That's pretty much, I think, comparable. <laughs> the guy. I hanging. guess, yeah. I just wasn't expecting it. I was like, oh man, no. Mm. I thought the end, I think. Mm. Is that why you changed? No. Because that anything. is directly, uh, real quick, the myth, there's a mythos, there's a. We're, ch- we're stuck in the lighthouse. We're never going to stop Pro- talking Proteus? about this movie. Pro- Protus? Protus? P R O T E U S. Proteus? Proteus. Proteus? I don't know. He's a prophet sea god who is called the Old Man of the Sea, who I guess um, Thomas Wake's character represents. And then. Who? Um, William Defoe. 
So. Oh, I was like, who the fuck <laughs> is that? <laughs> Willem Dafoe, then Robert Pattinson is uh, Prometheus, a titan and trickster figure who defies the gods, which is him, by stealing the fire, which represents the lighthouse, and then is eaten by birds. Well, shit, if you had told me that at the beginning, I would have understood this film a lot better. Would you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, but that's the thing. Like, That's what like Robert Eagers gives us. He's like, oh, it's based off this myth. It's like, cool, cool. But, but wait, what is it about? But how gay is it? <laughs> how, gay is it? <laughs> how gay is it? Um, To us, scariness. I give this movie a five. What? <laughs> yeah, I give what? it a five. I'm giving it a five. Oh, my God. It gets okay. a five. Oh, my God. You heard it here, folks, and she can't change it. It's crazy. It was its own thing the whole time. All right. Yeah, it was its, it was, are you so excited? I'm so excited. You're so confused? I just didn't know, Jamie. (laughs) I was like, I'm like, because we can either come out of this, literally this was me. I'm like, you can, we're either going to come out of this like us, where I'm going to be blown away that Jamie liked this movie a lot, or we're going to come out of it like Halloween and you're just like, this was miserable. (laughs) (laughs) It was not miserable. It was fucking wild and i loved it i loved watching it Mm -hmm. i loved it i loved talking about it i loved watching it um i was really thrown off by the the last few minutes of it because it felt very different we paused it just to check with you about something and i'm really glad we did pause it Mm because i needed like (gasps) just like a second there's one moment where jamie was like we paused it multiple times but there was one moment where jamie was just like am i enjoying this properly (laughs) because she's like i am delighted (laughs) yeah because i was just fucking around the whole time and be like hey you're mean like just kind of yeah. and that's what like this movie's so weird because there's so many other movies out there that are period piece movies and they're kind of like dramas or psychological thrillers yeah and it's like why does this set this movie apart this movie is quotable it has like scenes yeah. you can just cut out i was still. worried i was like fucking jokes. around and you were like disappointed i was fucking around during it but i think i was fucking around with the movie not yeah not to the movie i wasn't disappointed i was having a, i was delighted <laughs> i was good. like she's having a fun time i was it. having a fun time yeah i think that I'm trying to be, like, very honest with how I feel watching these movies. Because, mm. like, even with, ha- like, talking about Halloween, it was, it's a really good movie. Like, mm-hmm. now that I've had some time against it, it's a really good movie, and I don't want to watch anything John Carpenter's done ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and we will, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't think you'll like any of this. And I'm sure The Thing is going to ruin my life. I don't know how we're going to watch The Thing. We're going to watch it someday. We're going to take some time. Maybe like a year out. <laughs> it's another good quarantine movie. I'd recommend that. Ugh. Start distrusting everyone around you. Ah, no, none of that. Uh, Kiss your homies goodnight is the theme of this movie. I think that's the title <laughs> of this episode, too. <laughs> is that or Splash Zone? <laughs> And that's the show. Thanks for listening. Leave us a review on iTunes if you like what you hear. Share the pod if you're interested. You can connect with us on social media at Horoscope Pod with two D's on Twitter and Horoscope Pod with one D on Instagram. Your horoscope for the day is Don't spill your beans. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Eric. I just wanted to do the voice. Okay, don't don't spill your beans.